What's up, you guys? I know! If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much. Welcome back. No tomatoes, please. No tomatoes. I know it's been a long time. But if you are new here or you've stumbled upon my page, I hope that you'll check me out and then consider hitting that subscribe button. While you're at it, you might as well hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date every single time I drop a new video like today. <laughs> so you guys, I am laughing because I am very much so well aware. It's been a very long time, but I'm rusty. I, like I said, it's been a minute. So give me a little time to get back up to speed to my normal routine with filming and everything. But y'all, I'm really excited about today's video. So before we get into the swing of things, let me just address the elephant in the room because why do you look like this and then your outfit looks like this, y'all. So I took some pictures today for, I took some pictures, okay? I had a photo shoot today. So I figured why not capitalize on the moment while I'm all done up, I might as well come and film this video for you guys. But I wanted to be comfortable dressed down, you know, so I hope that's okay because the face and the outfit, they don't match. And I'm, I'm okay with that if you're okay, okay? I also have my hair in a clip, nothing fancy, but my bangs are doing something funky. It's on its own agenda today, so hopefully that's not a distraction. But getting back to the fragrance. So typically on my channel, I don't do single reviews. Now I have in the past, I did maybe one or two reviews on my channel. And they, I think they were both Kaoli fragrances, coincidentally. So this year I want to change it up a little bit and do a little bit more single reviews. Not for any particular reason, but if I feel compelled to talk about a fragrance on its own, then I'm going to do that and include it in this new series, which is called the EVE Rundown. Okay, so the first fragrance that we're featuring on this EVE Rundown is... Da, 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 Triumph of Bacchus from Argos Fragrances. Now this has been getting quite the buzz and so I wanted to go ahead and dedicate a full review to this fragrance. So the EVE rundown is going to consist of my experience and so this will be the bulk of my review. So I'll talk about essentially what this does for me and what it gives me. Then I'm going to touch on the value of the fragrance. So not only am I going to talk about the price, but I'm also going to give my input on what I think would be a value add or not to your collection. And then lastly is going to be the end result. Do I think it's a keeper or a sweeper? So if you're interested to see what my thoughts are on this fragrance, just keep on watching. All right. So like I mentioned, this has been getting quite the buzz in 2022, especially. And what really piqued my interest was when Miss Jessie here on YouTube, hey girl, um, she had done a live with some of the other beautiful ladies here on YouTube and she raved on and on and on about this, okay? And then shortly after Miss Spicy Looks, hey girl, hey, um, she raved on and on and on and on about this one as well. So I was like, you know what? Let me just bite the bullet and buy it okay so this was a blind buy for me and i have owned this for about a month and a half maybe two months now so i've had it long enough to give you my honest thoughts and opinions on how this works and performs for me so before we get into the juice can we just take a moment to appreciate how beautiful this bottle is y'all such a gorgeous this is an eye catcher for real so it's also pretty heavy so this is definitely a nice thick glass and then it has a really beautiful cap which this is also pretty weighty on its own but on the top of this it's got i think this is the evil eye and then there's a rhinestone in the middle of that or maybe a cubic zirconia don't get me to lie Okay, and then there is this intricate plaque on the front. There's an illustration on here that I can't really make out. What is going on on the front? I see like some dogs or some wolves or something. And then I see a man and another. Oh, I, I'm tripping. This is around Greek mythology. So this must be like um an olympian or god hold on let me pull up the website really quickly represented by the roman god bacchus bacchus was considered the god of wine making fertility ritual madness theater and religious ecstasy 
He was one of the 12 Olympians, although he was the last to arrive. Often called, I don't know how to pronounce that, meaning the liberator, because his wine, music, and ecstatic dance freed mortals from self-consciousness and the restraints of society. Mm, a rebel. Okay, Bacchus. Bacchus crossed the boundary between life and death, between the known and unknown. He was a god of chaos and protector of misfits. Okay, this makes even more sense now. But yeah, so love the bottle, love this presentation. So now let's get into the juice. All right. So we're going to spray this, y'all, beautiful atomizer. So I'm gonna tell you what I get off rip from this, okay? Both on paper and in the air. So on paper, what this gives me, I get a spicy saffron, immediately spicy saffron. But it's mixed with something initially I thought was just maybe like a tart fruit. And then once I read the notes, it's a green apple. And you guys know that green apples are typically kind of tarty more than they are sweet. Such an interesting and unique combination. I've never smelled anything like that before, but it's done very well in here. Really, really, really love the opening of it. It's very different from, like I said, anything that I've smelled before. So on the top, there's rum, white peach, green apple. In the mid, you get patchouli, jasmine, tonka bean, and vetiver. On the base, you get tobacco, amber, mysone, sandalwood, vanilla, and musk. So for me, I primarily get this spicy saffron mixed with this tarty sweetness, which is the green apple. And then shortly after, this booziness comes and it kind of engulfs that saffron and that tartness. And then as this starts to develop, I don't get a whole lot of patchouli, but I do know that it's there. I get kind of hints and peaks of it coming through. And then as it gets to the base, that is when the tobacco for me starts to make its way out. So once the tobacco makes itself present, that saffron to me kind of softens and the edges around the saffron are not as harsh as they are on the top. And I think it's that way because of the green apple and how tart it is. So the tartness of the green apple makes that saffron in the beginning just a little bit more intense. So if you are not a fan of saffron, I don't know how you will play with this because the saffron never goes away. The saffron is there from the beginning to the end, but as it comes down to the dry down, the saffron is softened up quite a bit because on the dry down, there is some vanilla, there is some musk. And on the ultimate dry down, I will say, I get some sort of like a cherry aspect. There is no cherry note in here, but there's something cherry-like that I am getting. And it may be from the tonka bean. And I know from other fragrances that I have in my collection that have tonka bean, they tend to give me some sort of cherry vibe, if you will. So ultimately that is what I get from the notes of this fragrance. So let's talk about performance. Now in this category, I'm gonna give this two thumbs up. So when I sprayed this on my skin, I got about five and a half to six hours or so, something like that. The first two hours, I got nice, loud, and long wafts of this scent. And then it comes down into about a mid bubble. And that's pretty much where it stays for the other four or so hours, but it's it's a nice player in the longevity projection game. So no complaints in the performance area. So is this fragrance unique? On a scale of one to five, I would rate this about a three and a half on the uniqueness scale. One being not so unique, five being very unique. I would say this is about a mid, okay? Now I have seen a couple of reviews where this has been compared to red tobacco, red velvet tobacco, something like that. I've never smelt it for myself, but outside of that, in that comparison, I haven't come across anything else that smells like this to me. So that is why I give it a three and a half. Not only that, but like I said, on top you have this spicy saffron mixed with this tart green apple. I've never smelled that combination before. Is it similar to other fragrances? Probably so. There are so many fragrances out here on the market. It's bound to have a doppelganger or a dupe, so I wouldn't be surprised. But to me and my nose and what I've come across, I would say that this gets a three and a half in the unique department. So what's the vibe? What does this give me? So. This gives me sexy, this gives me date night, this gives me attractive, 
this gives me you know how to dress okay this does not give me throw on some sweats and throw on triumph and Bacchus. no they those two don't go together this requires some thought into your look like if you're going to dress up and be dressy you can pair it with triumph of Bacchus. even if you're going to be dressed up but you're casual you can still pair it with triumph of Bacchus. don't disrespect this fragrance by throwing it with some sweats because that's not what this gives at all this definitely gives effort this definitely gives an elevated look this gives me elevated this gives me luxuriousness this does not give me you can pair me with some sweats so you can be bummy it just it doesn't go together okay so triumph of bacchus is offered in two sizes you have a 30 mil which retails for 125 dollars i believe and then you have this size which is the 100 mil and this is offered at or retails at 245 dollars now i did use a code like i said spicy looks she raved about this and i used her code so i did get 10 percent off so every little bit helps but in regards to pricing and how it aligns with other niche fragrances i think the pricing is pretty consistent with other again other luxurious niche fragrances so what value does this add to one's collection should you choose to buy it so like i mentioned before what this gives me this gives me sexy this gives me attractiveness so if you are lacking in the date night space i think this would be a great value to add to your collection um i also mentioned this has been compared to red tobacco velvet tobacco somebody let me know what the name of that fragrance is but based on those reviews that i saw between the two this is the better option because this is more refined it's softer around the edges it's not as harsh so again if you're lacking in the date night space or something to kind of elevate your scent especially at night this would definitely be a great value to add to your collection so what is the end result do i think triumph of bacchus is a keeper or a sweeper y'all if y'all can't see this dent oh my gosh i've had to kind of refrain myself from spraying this you know when you get something new in your collection you want to wear it all the time that's definitely what i did but i was going ridiculously overboard with this and i was wearing it every single day for eight days straight and then i took a break and then i picked it back up i would spray it two days take a break, spray it another day, take a break, spray maybe two days, take a break. So I have got some pretty good wears with this scent. So I am definitely pleased and I definitely think this is a keeper. So with my purchase, I also received two samples and I quickly want to share that with you. So I received a sample of Danae, which I don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick this up, but there is like one drop of this scent left in here, y'all. My next pickup is going to be Danae. This is so beautiful to me. I absolutely love this. It is a very bright, zesty, citrusy type of scent. And I'll be honest, while I do find that this one is definitely unisex, Danae leans a little bit more masculine because of that Sicilian lemon that it has on the top. But as this one dries down, it kind of gets a, like a little bit cashmere creamy like i don't know i think there is cashmere wood in here there's a creamy aspect to it that i just absolutely love as it dries down but definitely beautiful and definitely one that i want to get a bottle of in the future but i'm not in a rush and then i got another sample this one is called bravito della casilla i don't know if i pronounced that correctly i did not enjoy this one y'all this one is straight up leather and pepper and when i tell you that this is strong this is so strong i no i could not i couldn't take it i could not take it so this was the other sample that i got wasn't a fan of it at all this is definitely on the masculine side and while i do enjoy my unisex fragrances sometimes fragrances that lean a little masculine i this one was unfortunately a no for me. There is another popular fragrance from this house. I think it's Adonis Awaken. Definitely want to get my nose on that one and see what it gives me. There's also the Pore Femme that I want to try. So I'm really excited to delve more into this house and explore what else they have to offer. Like I said, I am in love with Danae. So I definitely know this is going to be a pickup for me. But I definitely want to try samples of the other offerings from the house. So... I hope you guys enjoyed this review of Triumph of Bacchus. Let me know if you own this already or if you've sampled this. What are your thoughts on this fragrance? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like down below. That does help get visibility to my channel. Um, and just, you know, get me exposed to the rest of YouTube land, okay? So until the next time, you guys, I really did miss you. So happy to be back and engage with you all. I will catch you guys in the comments, and I'll see you on the next one.